Hello everybody, welcome to computerhandle.com. So, today we're going to cover up post-condition loops. And at the end of this lecture, we will also compare the previous while loop with the new loop which we're going to study today. And the scenarios on, on the basis of which loop should we choose. Alright, so um, again, let the loop be have start and an end. All right, so the keywords, you can say the syntax, but this time the condition has to be here. All right, so we can't write while and end while, of course, right here. We can't swap them. Instead, we need to have some better keywords. And the way we write them in pseudocode is, for example, we may write repeat. That's what we use usually. So repeat until condition is true. So repeat until condition. So that's how it works. So. Here's our post condition loop. We have the condition at the end. So the way we will deduce uh, that uh, whether the loop will break off or not. So the way it works is that until we have the condition and the condition here is false. The loop will repeat until the condition is uh, made true. So while the condition is false, you're going to keep the loop repeating unless the condition is true. When it becomes true, it's going to proceed on downwards. And uh, that's the basic example of it. And uh, let's do an example question. And before we end the lecture, I want to compare about loops because that's most important of this, uh, probably these two lectures. All right, so here's the question. So the question states, enter numbers until sum is greater than 100. Output numbers entered. So again, we're going to have the same two variables, num, sum, both, let's suppose, be declared as integer. All right, and of course, as usual, I've, Forget this to write beforehand. I'm going to write this during the uh, video recording to enter integer numbers Sim to help us simplify our stuff. So we have num sum, but this time it tells us to output the total number of numbers entered, something which was not asked in the previous question. So therefore, we we'll need to have also a third variable by the name, let's suppose, count. Suitable identifiers, keep remember that. And we'll also declare that as an int. Of course, count must be an integer. All right, so once the rough draft is ready, which it is, I think, we can proceed on with the direct pseudocode designing part. So we have to declare three variables, all three by the name it. So I'm going to write declare uh, num sum and count as, I think I'm going to run out of space, integer. Yeah, just about that. That's integer written, okay? So um, now we're going to start off uh, with our repeat loop. All right, we're not going to have an input statement before the repeat loop, repeat loop this time. All right, so repeat. And uh, this time we're going to uh, until the condition is true. So let's suppose the condition is sum is less than 100. So we're going to write input sum. All right, uh, sorry, input num, pretty straightforward. And then we're going to sum it up in a similar way we, should, we did it in the previous lecture. All right, now, after once this is done, it will compare, of course, yeah, 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 one thing, please, one thing, I nearly forgot it. We need to output the number of enters entered. So before we can write until, we need to have another line counting the total number of times the loop has been repeated. And you know the way we do this, count, is count plus one. So initially, the count is uh, set to zero, declared to zero. Plus one, the loop is repeated first time to get the new value of count, which will be one. Once the loop is repeated again, the value of count will already be one plus one to get the new value of count, which will be two, and so on. So now we're going to write the until part. All right, and to help us easily understand, I'm going to write some dotted lines here. So help us easily understand. So repeat this bunch of code until the condition it's true. So the condition is until sum is greater than 100. So we're going to, uh, you know, keep the loop repeating until sum reaches 100. Until sum is 100. That's one we're going to write. And then we have to output numbers inside. So we're going to write print count. And that's uh, pseudocode complete. So now we're going to drive in this program uh, and create a trace table for it. So this time we have three values, num, sum, count. And of course, Output. Okay, we're going to draw some lines there. One, two, three. And let's draw another one. Four. All right. So, 
Into clear? Yeah. So repeat, we input num. Uh, let's suppose the num first time we enter uh, is uh, 3. The sum is 3. Now it's going to count till 1. Is sum, which is now 3, is it greater than 100? No. So it's going to go up back and repeat loop another time. So input num, let's suppose this time be uh, 7. So the sum will be, of course, 3 plus 7, 10. And the count will be this time 2. So is sum greater than 100? No. It's still smaller than 100 is 10. So it's going to repeat again. This time, let's enter sort of a larger number. Uh, let's enter 89. So we're going to have 99 right here. And uh, once we have 99, we'll count will be 3. Now this is going to check whether well, uh, sum 99 is uh, greater than 100. No, it's not. It's going to repeat that again. Now let's enter 4. All right. And now it knows that the value of sum will be 103. And the count will be 4. Now sum is greater than 100 this condition in the fourth time of the loop has been made true which means that it will now break up from the loop at this point as it's going to proceed on with the rest of the pseudocode in this case it's just one line print count so output count that's our trace table complete all right just before we end this lecture i just want to emphasize on the need of preconditioned loops post-conditioned loops and the reason uh, or the scenarios based on which loop you should choose so, probably this part, the next and probably the last two minutes will be the last, most important part of this uh, these two lectures. So, I have the previous lecture's notes right here on the under underside of the paper. So, in this example, we used a preconditioned loop. The condition has to be before the end while, okay? And here, we are, use the post-conditioned loop. So, why is the reason? We can also do this with a preconditioned loop. But why is the reason... Uh, uh, but what is the reason exactly why post condition suits here and a precondition suits here in this question? Hey, come back, you little one mark, like so. Good boy. Okay, so what's exactly the reason why we're following a precondition loop here? Well, the reason is that in precondition loop, I even told this in the previous chapter, the precondition -pre loop has no minimum requirement to be repeated. All right, so we'll just write no minimum. But here, the repeat loop has to repeat at least once. It has to be run at least once. All right, and let's emphasize on the need on why we actually use post condition here and the precondition on the underside of the paper. So if you read the question carefully, it said to enter numbers until sum is equal to 100. Now, initially, the value of sum is zero. All right, before the loop has been started. So we know that even if we enter the larger number, let's suppose 101, 102, 103, on the first count, the loop has to repeat at least once, which is why we're going to always use the repeat until the loop for such conditions, because the requirement is we need to make the sum greater than 100. We can do that in one, one time the loop is repeated, or we can even do it in 100 times the loop is repeated. So, and so that, that's how it works. But in the preconditioned loop, we had no minimum call. So if the can, let's suppose that the minus one is entered. So take note that I've entered input num here. What if in the first place I entered a negative one here? So this condition would by default be false and it's, it will jump straight from line two to line number seven. It won't run the loop at least once, which means that the value of some little output is zero. So you, you get my point? I think you do. So uh, the reason why we use the precondition loop is because the, the, the value of num which we enter could already be minus one. It could, the value could already be minus one. So the loop repeating at least once doesn't really, you know, fit into the context. However, on the other side of the paper, we have that the sum should be a uh, hundred. So initially the sum is zero. We know that we've declared that. Uh, but the value of sum needs to be made at least 100 for the first time, which means the loop has to be repeated at least once. And therefore, we use the repeat until loop here. So this art of, you know, deducing which type of, which subtype of the conditioned loop to use and which question is very tricky. But once understood, it makes your life very, 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 very easy. And that's, uh, that's, I think, sums up our loop section of this chapter. So um, in the next video, we will, in the next lecture, we will be discussing a little bit uh, practice questions. Then we will proceed on to some extra concepts, which, will, which we did not discuss on uh, the flowchart chapter. 
All right, so take care, everybody. Thank you for viewing this lecture at computerhandle.com. See you soon.